in 2015, there was a loan move to Sheffield United. And of course, the reason we've got you on the Sheffield United way. So how did that move come about? Well, obviously, it came about um, through um, Dean Wilkins, um, through uh, Nigel Atkins at the time. Um, I was at Leicester. I just signed a new contract at Leicester. Claudio Ranieri had come in. Um, uh, Kante had come in. We signed another player, Got Ingler from, from uh, Switzerland. And my chances at Leicester were obviously going to be limited. The club wanted me to stay. I must admit, they weren't, willing, they weren't pushing me out the door. Um, but then I spoke to Nigel. I spoke to Dean. They... they spoke really highly of Sheffield United. Obviously, I, I knew of the club and what a big club it was and the support we had. And um, I knew the relationship I had with them and what we experienced at Southampton. Um, and I just felt as though that could potentially happen again, you know, going to a big club in, in League One with a good managing staff and, and good players. I knew some of the players at the club. Obviously, I played with Billy before and I spoke to Billy. Um, and it was supposed to happen in the summer, early on, in, not early on in the summer, but it didn't happen uh, before the deadline closed, as in the, the first transfer deadline day. I actually, I drove up to Leicester, I was waiting in a, some services to sign and then it didn't happen. Leicester wouldn't allow it to happen um, and then signed on loan, I think, a month or so later. So it was through the relationship I had with the manager, um, through wanting to come for, to play for a a, a big football club in League One to be successful and because I wanted to play football again. You know, I was getting older. Um, I didn't want to just sit at a club and, and be a squad player or not even a squad player or in and out. I wanted to still have an effect on the game. Obviously, it didn't quite work out like that, but that was the intention. Mm. Um, just before you came to Sheffield United, I just want to ask, when you came to Bramall Lane, what did you think about kind of the ground and the club uh, in general. I know you just said it's a, obviously a big club in League One at the time, uh, but what did you think about Sheffield United before you joined? Well, I obviously knew it was a big club. I'd played at the stadium um, a few times. I'd experienced the atmosphere. Um, and so I knew um, what I was going to be signing up for, and I was excited about that. I really was. You know, as a footballer, I was one that always wanted to play in front of big crowds, wanted to play in front of them atmospheres. It really inspired me and motivated me so I knew what um, I was signing on for I knew there was an expectation and, and rightly so you know Sheffield United was were, were in League One and they're in the Premier League now so you can see what a, a sort of club it is um, and obviously I knew Billy pretty well from being at Southampton together um, and he obviously spoke really highly at the club because he's you know he's born and bred he's, he's a massive supporter um, and I had the chance, I'm not going to lie, I had a chance to go to some championship clubs before I came to Sheffield United. And I chose not to because, one, the club, and two, because of the managing staff and the relationship we'd have from Southampton, um, I decided to come to Sheffield United. So, obviously, at Sheffield United, when you came, uh, Billy Sharp, you've just spoken about, was um, was speaking very highly of the club. You already knew Nigel Likens. Did you know anyone else before you came in, or did you become very good mates with... Uh, anyone in the dressing room? To be fair, I knew some of the players that I'd played against them. I personally didn't um, know anyone else within the football club. You know, I played against, obviously, Paul Coots. I played against um, uh, uh, Bash um, during his career, um, Jamal Campbell-Rice, you know, players like that I'd, I'd played against during my career, so I knew of them. And I knew, I knew the strength of the squad. I knew the quality within the squad. Um, so walking into the dressing room felt, you know, the players made me feel welcome. It was good. I was looking forward to it. Um, I knew it was going to be a challenge because when you're a big club in League One, you know, every every time you play against one of the teams, it's their cup final, so they raise the game against you. So, no, I knew some of the players in the dressing room. Um, and obviously, Billy, you know, he, he spoke really highly of the football club and made me feel welcome. And it was a good atmosphere at the club. It, it was within that dressing room. Um, ah, so, yeah, it was, it was easy to, to settle with. Good, good. And what would you describe as your personal highlight during your time at Sheffield United? <laughs> well, you know, individually, obviously, I, I struggled um, personally for, for, for performances. There's no hiding away from that. I mean, I take full responsibility for that. There's no excuses. Um, but, you know, there was some times where, and the best things I enjoyed was, when we played at uh, uh, home, when we played at Bramall Lane in, in the atmosphere, I can remember one game where we played Bradford at, at home uh, around Christmas time. I think it was just after Christmas and we won 3-1 and the atmosphere was unbelievable. You know, one of the best that 
I'd honestly experienced in my career. We won three one. It was a full house. We actually played really well that day, which obviously didn't happen too much that season. But we we were on form. Um, we played with a high intensity. We scored some really good goals. We played some good football. And I must admit, at that time, I thought, okay, it might just click here. This might just happen now. We might just put a run together. We might have just got a settled team. Um, so it was always more to do with when we won and experiencing that atmosphere from the fans. Because, you know, when we're winning, they were both, I remember going away and winning at, at Scunthorpe. And there was a, it was packed behind the goal. We won 2-1, I think, late on. And the fans were going mental. And we were celebrating the fans. And I was thinking, this is amazing. This is what football is all about. And them moments, you, you never forget whether it, it's good or bad or, you know, how your career runs or how your career at a certain club ha uh, ends up being like. You never, you never forget them moments. So I'd have to say that, to be honest. Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like none of us really understood how it didn't work because we had some great players on the pitch. Nigel Adkins had got a great CV. I think when, when Nigel Adkins came in, I remember saying to a Sheffield Wednesday fan, a uh, mate of mine, um, and, he, and I said, I bet you're gutted that we've got Nigel Adkins as manager um, because he'd, he'd, he'd done so well in his career. Um, so, yeah, obviously, Che Adams up front, Billy Sharp up front, both of them playing in the Premier League right now. Uh, we had some other really good players. So why, why do you think it didn't quite click? I mean, it's a good question because, like you say, we had a good squad. Um, there's there's not many reasons why it shouldn't have clicked, um, but unfortunately it didn't. Um, I think, I think the, if I'm honest, there was too much trying to change it at, at once. You know, we were maybe trying to change the style of play. Um, probably trying to be a bit too patient with, with our build-up. Um, and then changing that again, we changed shape a few times. I think, like I mentioned, I can't, I can't speak for anyone else, but I can speak for myself. I didn't perform to the way that was expected when I came into the football club. I, I didn't perform the way I felt I was going to um, perform. Um, and I think it was just that. I don't think we got the relationships right on the pitch in terms of the players. We didn't quite click. We couldn't get a run together. The expectation when we weren't doing too well, we, we, we didn't probably... We didn't, bounce back and go, okay, well, let's just take one game at a time. Let's win this weekend, then let's win next weekend and then build it up. We were always thinking maybe a little too far ahead. I just think it was one of those seasons that didn't, it just didn't click. And if we won a couple of games, then we go and lose a couple of games. We couldn't get a consistent run of three or four wins, draw one, another two wins, draw one, lose one, another two wins to keep getting up the league. And it was strange because obviously in the dressing room, the players, we would talk about it, we would discuss it, we cared, you know, it wasn't like we weren't trying. It may, you know, you may argue that, you may think, well, it did look like you weren't trying and you weren't putting your, your full effort into it. But we were, you know, we were trying really, really hard. We would change different ways. I, I think there was a period towards the end of the season that we went 3-5-2, uh, we went three centre-halves and we were playing out from the back and, you know, we would work, we were doing double sessions twice a week. We were training at Bramall Lane to, um, against the um, the 23s and playing them in matches to make sure the shape was right. You know, the, the coaching staff would get the 23s to play exactly how the opposition were going to play Saturday. So we knew, we were prepared. We just, for whatever reason, didn't perform on a Saturday, which is the most important thing. And we couldn't put a consistent run together. So if you're asking me exactly why, I think there was just a number of, of small things that just didn't quite work out. 